Maybe you know you're a leader in different settings. It depends. You can be a leader within your family, you might be a leader at your office. So if we're talking about professionally, I would say when I realized people were willing to follow me. And when I talk about leadership, I don't mean leadership as a lawyer, but more broadly. I don't think you can lead by fear. And I've seen, early, particularly earlier in my career, not as much now, people that are inclined to do that. They want to think that if they have more power over you, that if they can control whether you keep your job, how much money you get, whether or not you get a certain amount of recognition, I, I don't think fear is the great motivator at all. There's a struggle there because I do believe women are socialized a certain way. I don't believe there's an innate ability to say that we are nurturers or that we are team players and we're consensus builders. That's the way many times we have been socialized from a very, very early age. And in some ways, while that's valued, at least in today's environment, it can also be seen that you're not a person that's a go-to problem solver. And I don't think women ultimately as leaders want to be relegated to that role. And so there's a balance, as there is for most things, that you try to strike, which is you know when you are consciously being disruptive versus when you step back and decide, you know what, that's not a fight I'm going to wage on this round. There are certain values that you bring with you no matter where you go. Yes, you have to calibrate them, no doubt, but at the core of who you are, that's really, really important. And I say to people, figure out what's negotiable and non-negotiable. And once you figure that out, I think you're able to make those judgment calls in a lot more grounded way. One of the people that ended up being a staunch mentor and then supporter was someone who is terribly, terribly different from me. And so what I tell young people is, while you want a cabinet of mentors, not one, it's not dessert, that you want many different types of people and look for folks who are not like you. It is easy to go to someone like you and they are most often gonna reinforce what you already think that's not where you want to be. You want someone who is going to stretch you. So when I think about what I wish I had known, there are lots of things. But I'll just name a few, and one sticks out in particular, that you can lead without knowing everything. And it takes a while when you're an individual contributor to say, you're not doing the work anymore, someone else is. And when you recognize that the people around you may be smarter than you are and more accomplished and not to be threatened by it, but still to have them be willing to follow you. I thought I had to be able to do everything everybody that worked for me did. And I said, well, that's a recipe for disaster. But I didn't understand that initially. The other thing that I think is really important is learning when people around you that you're grooming may do things differently from you and that doesn't make it wrong. It just means they approach things differently. And knowing when to let them have their lead, even when you look at it and go, well, I wouldn't have quite done it that way.